Hi, I'm Teresa Kanan with Stitch and Tree Quilts, and this is row two of our quilt, COVID Friends Tribute Quilt. Let's take a look at the fabrics. In mortarboard, the fabric that you choose can be directional because your fabric, your squares can be turned in any direction so you can make sure the direction goes the way you want. If you're using background fabric that's directional, again, you can get it to go the direction you like it to or you can mix it up should you choose. For my bright batik, I initially began with this block but when I laid it up on the design wall with my other blocks, it didn't end up looking like a mortarboard the way I'd like it to. So I recreated the block with a darker outside and a lighter inside, and I liked that one better. For my bright blenders, my school colors were purple and gold, and I initially wanted the gold in the center of that, but it was too much color in the center, and it drew your eye to the center instead of the outside. At the end of all of this, I think I'm going to make a tassel out of embroidery floss, so I'll just attach a tassel to it. My rich and deep batiks allowed me to not necessarily fussy cut, but be selective about the way I cut the center of that unit. And my deep and rich blenders, I was able to get that purple and gold that I was looking for. The unit itself calls for you to cut some three and seven eighths inch background half squares. I like to use a Marty Michelle square up tool because it has eight inch markings that make it very easy to cut. And I choose to cut my half squares and engineer those corners with my engineered tool. This is just a Marty Michelle flying geese. You can use any Marty Michelle half square and it will work. So all your cutting instructions are indicated right here. In step one, once you've stitched the two sides to the side of your center unit of your mortarboard, you are to press to the outside. And you can do that. And you can press to the outside by setting the seam, opening it and pressing to the outside. Turn the unit over. Set the seam and press the outside. This center unit is important to keep it nice and straight so you're dealing with a nice straight rectangle so that when we get to the next step where we add the sides to it, they add on nice and straight. In step two, once I've added those long rectangles to the sides and stitched them in place, I press them to the outside. I set the seam, open it up, press to the outside by holding for five seconds. Turn the unit over, set the seam, set the seam and press to the outside for five seconds. When applying the half square triangles, if you've used directional fabric, you should lay out the unit first on a mat or a small or a piece of paper or a little design board and get your directions for your half squares going the way that you would like them to go. Now by doing it this way, you can see I have everything going all the same direction. For my quilt, I choose to have it go multiple directions. So I'm purposefully going to make some changes so that they don't all go the same direction. In 
In step three, you're going to apply the half square unit to the sides and you're going to do that with the stitched seamed side first. So find your centers with using the pinch method. Pinch the center of your half square to mark that center and pinch the center of your unit. With those centers marked, I can pin that in place and stitch that along those outside edges. Step three calls for you to press to the outside. You'll do that by setting your seam, hot iron, no steam, and press to the outside. Using steam can introduce stretch into this unit. And when you're doing a square and a square, this is not a unit you want to introduce stretch into. Then I'll apply the last two half squares to the sides of the units and this block will be complete. In step four, you set the seams and press to the outside. Now a square in the square block because you're using so much bias is one that can get wonky pretty easy on you. So it's one that I really want to encourage you to use a six and a half inch square up tool or any square up tool that you can get to six and a half inches and square up your unit making sure that there's not areas that you need to trim in order to keep it right at a true six and a half. If you have any questions along the way, give me a call, send me an email, do a post on our group Facebook page. And we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can to answer any questions that you might have. I thank you for joining us and have a blessed day.